polyester fleece in the 1980s changed the way we dress for the cold. Instead of heavy and constricting clothing, we can now layer with lightweight fleece. Its texture gives us that warm fuzzy feeling, and so does the philosophy behind it, because it's often woven with recycled yarn. From trash to textile, today's fleece offers warmth from waste, because it's partly knit with yarn made from soda bottles and other discarded plastic. The recycled yarn looks and feels exactly the same as the virgin kind. They both unwind into a huge circular knitting machine. It knits a lot faster than grandma, so we've slowed down the video to give you a good look at the knitting action. Hundreds of tiny needles grab and stitch the recycled and virgin yarns together to create a perpetual tube of material. This machine generates nearly a meter of polyester every two minutes. Big metal brackets flatten the knitted tube so it can be taken up by a spool. Inspectors check for any major flaws. If necessary, they'll halt production until the problem can be fixed. Then it's over to the laundry department, where a cylindrical machine washes and dries the material. It then dyes the fabric under pressure and adds a water-repellent chemical to the fabric. After another wash and dry, equipment funnels the polyester into a holding bin. They feed the long polyester tubing through a device that twists it to wring out the rest of the water. As the knitted tube exits the twister, a circular cutter slits it, turning it into a sheet. This sheet of fabric is thin, and not fleecy at all at this point. One side is a smooth knit, while the other is rougher. It has thousands of tiny loops. Cylindrical wire brushes will transform this polyester into fleece in a process called napping. Each brush spins at a different speed. It's all carefully calculated to break the knitted loops without tearing the fabric. The napped side of the material is now fuzzy and fleecy. The smooth side of the fabric winds around a second set of spinning brushes. They pull fibers through from the fleecy side to evenly distribute them on both sides. The double brushing increases the fabric's thickness five-fold and builds air pockets into the fleecy pile for insulation. All this without adding weight. A spiraling blade then shears the fibers to a uniform length to prevent pilling, which looks bad and can compromise those insulating air pockets. Each production run undergoes a battery of tests, like this one, for water repellents. If the water doesn't soak into the fleece, it's a pass. In another test, they insert scratchy nylon strips in the head of a tool. As it spins, it rubs the fabric the wrong way. The test simulates wear and tear and determines whether the fleece will resist pilling. They try to set fire to a swatch that has flame-resistant fibers woven into it. The fleece smolders, then extinguishes the flame. Once the fleece has passed all the tests, production resumes. Grippers pull it along the edges to stretch it to the desired width. Steam rises to heat set the fabric to its new measurement. And now, this batch of fleece is ready to sew. They fold it for transport to the clothing factory. In its various colors and textures,